Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A good setup is essential for many things. You need a good setup for a good story, right? You've got to get the, the setting in place. You have to introduce the characters. You have to get the reader to connect with them in order for the story to really hit you. It also helps when you're working on a complex project or a project that takes multiple stages. Maybe a project at your workplace reminds you of something like this where you have to sit down and you have to plan out what exactly you're going to do and you have to get that set before you begin. Perhaps someone who knows this most um, aptly would be the farmer. In order for anything to work that he plants, the setup has to be right. He has to till the ground. He has to make the soil fertile before the seed can be planted. Well, today in our gospel reading, the setup in Matthew is complete. You see, in our gospel reading today is the conclusion of the setup. It actually comes at verse 16 in chapter 4. It marks the end of the setup section of Matthew introducing Jesus. From Matthew chapter 1 through Matthew 4, verse 16, the writer is establishing, laying the groundwork for the public ministry of Jesus. Now, of course, we know in the Old Testament that this setup has been going on long before Matthew wrote his gospel, that Jesus is the one who has been promised by God and prophesied throughout the Old Testament to come and save his people. But Matthew is binding all of that together at the beginning of the book in order to set up the ministry and work of Jesus. After all, the whole book of all the Bible you can think of as a setup for Jesus. Well, his setup leads to the very first words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew in verse 17. The first words of his public ministry, and he says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This marks the beginning of his ministry. And now, because of the setup of Matthew, we know exactly who is saying that to us and what it means. Matthew's setup delivers three main points to the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And they establish who he is and what he has come to do. The first point is that Jesus is the prophesied Messiah. Now, one of the really common questions I get as a pastor is, What's the deal with all of those lists of names in some of the chapters of the Bible? Do I really need to know all those names? Why are they all listed out? It's a good question. I had that question for a long time myself growing up. Is this person begat this person, and they're the son of this person, and it goes all the way down the line. Well, Matthew's doing that to establish that Jesus is the prophesied Messiah from the line of David, connecting the identity of who is coming with the one they have been waiting for. And he does this also by citing Old Testament prophecy. Now in our gospel reading today is the fifth time in the book of Matthew already in chapter 4 that Isaiah has been cited and Jesus has been the Emmanuel God with us figure from Isaiah. So Jesus is the prophesied and promised Savior. The second point is that Jesus is the Son of God who will take the place of sinners. We saw this in the baptism of Jesus celebrated a couple of weeks ago, and then we re-celebrated again with a baptism of our own the week after. But at the baptism of Jesus, what occurs? Not only is there witness borne about him by John the Baptist, who is called to prepare the way, but God himself makes an appearance. And speaks and says, this is my beloved son. And the Holy Spirit comes in the form of a dove and rests upon Jesus. He is the son of God. And why is he being baptized? Because the baptism that John was offering was a baptism for repentance. In other words, it was a place meant for sinners to stand. And Christ stands in the place of sinners. Through being baptized through subjecting himself to that baptism, he's binding himself to us and beginning to show that what he will do throughout his ministry is stand in the place of sinners. The third point of the setup 
is the conflict between Satan and Jesus in the wilderness. This occurs in Matthew chapter 4, right before we get to our gospel reading today. Because Jesus is true man, battles all the weaknesses of the flesh and the temptations that we endure, but with one crucial difference. He doesn't succumb to any of them, because he is also the Son of God. And so we know from his trial in the wilderness, it's beginning to set the tone of this conflict between Satan and Jesus, but Jesus is the victor. He is the one who overcomes the devil. So now the stage is set. The connections have been made. The setup is complete. And here comes Jesus. The last piece to fall into place is at the very beginning of our gospel reading. You can almost miss it if you're not paying attention. And that is that the herald of the Savior, the preparer of the way, his time comes to an end. He's arrested by Herod. In the Greek, there's more of a sense of that he's handed over to the authorities. And then when Jesus hears this, his time has come. He retreats into Galilee, again fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy about Zebulun and Naphtali, and begins his public ministry with these words, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Matthew indicates this shift this significant shift by the way he phrases these first words. He says, from that time, Jesus began. And we get the first words of Jesus in all the book of Matthew. The stage is set. The royal son of David, the son of God who takes the place of sinners, the victor over our adversary is here. And he has begun himself to preach and to teach. Ironically, he begins with the same words as John does. John makes this same call, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But when John spoke these words, he was referring to Jesus. He was pointing to Jesus. As he said, one who is mightier than I is coming after me, whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. The kingdom of heaven is at hand in him. And now Jesus himself saying those words, and when he says it, He's referring to the reigning action of God that is already now beginning when he speaks those words. That has already now begun in the lives of all those whom he has been sent to save when he begins to speak those words. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the action of God in the flesh. This address, like John's, is spoken to a lost people. Right? The call to repentance is a call to conversion. It's a call to turn away from the path that they are now on. Now, there may have been some who are still faithful worshipers of God, but most of the people of the Jews had strayed from right worship of God. And this is to be seen as they clash with Jesus in the rest of the book of Matthew the rejection of his teachings, the rejection of his messiahship, and so forth. But here there's also an important note made, that he retreats to Galilee, and then in the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah, it is a Galilee of the Gentiles. That Christ has come not just to the lost sheep of Israel, but the definition of Israel is going to be expanded to include all those who call upon him in faith. So Jesus' call today, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, is for you, for his people, for those who have faith in him. For after all, his desire is to gather you to himself. So it makes sense that right after all this setup, in the beginning of Jesus' public ministry starts off, the very first thing he does after sort of announcing himself as the Messiah, is to call his first disciples. And the interesting thing is, he's very clear from the get-go what the purpose of the disciple is to be. That they are part of his endeavor to gather the lost to himself. 
He's going to train them up so they can join him using his words to call more and more people and eventually, as we hear at the end of Matthew, to the ends of the earth, those who are going to come to Christ. So Jesus gathers himself, uh, us to himself. And why does he do that? Well, the, the text continues on and explains what Jesus is doing in the beginning of his ministry. He's freeing his people from sin. He's rescuing them from death and the devil. Those in darkness and in the shadow of death. And he does this in two main ways highlighted here in Matthew chapter 4. He proclaims the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven that is at hand. And dear friends in Christ, we know what that gospel is. It is that it turns out we have a God who loves even sinners like you and me. And he loves us so much that he sent this Jesus to be in our place to save us from our sins. And he begins to demonstrate what exactly that will look like by showing little sneak previews of his authority and victory over the manifestations of sin in this world, by healing illnesses and diseases, by casting out demons and remedies to all kinds of affliction. This is why he wants to gather you to himself. For in him you are freed from sin, death, and Satan. Remember back in the setup that he overcomes our adversary. And so it begins, the ministry of Jesus. Today Jesus is speaking to you. The setup is complete. He is the Son of God, the prophesied Savior from the line of David. He stands in the place of sinners like you and me. Not just in the waters of the Jordan, but on the cross of judgment. Bearing the penalty for our sin, he has overcome what we could not. Our great adversary, the devil, sin, and death. So he says to us today, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's saving work has begun in the ministry of Jesus. In your very hearing, he has come to gather you to himself. In the coming weeks, as we gather here at church in his house to hear his words and receive his teachings and the rest of the book of Matthew, take heart in this message that he has come to set his people free, that he is the one who has prophesied to come to proclaim to you the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace and peace and mercy. That you have a God who loves sinners, who takes their place in the Jordan and in judgment, who trains disciples so that more and more people may hear this gospel. The setup is complete. Jesus is here. He has come to save the lost. He has come to save you. He who is victorious over all our enemies. So dear friends in Christ, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the name of Jesus. Amen.